The reaction of the outside world of this growing revolution in France was best contrasted between Irish conservative statesman Edmund Burke and British American revolutionary Thomas Paine. In 1790, Burke would publish Reflections on the Revolution in France, denouncing the revolution as a destructive force and defended the monarchy there. He perceived the revolution as tearing the fabric of society. Burke, who was devoutly religious, also vehemently defended the power of the church over society. Burke predicted through the chaos of the revolution a popular general would take power, one of the few predictions he got right. Thomas Paine was fascinated with the French Revolution, and like Jefferson, felt a revolutionary kinship with the movement. He would write The Rights of Man in two parts in reaction to Burke, and also be involved with the National Assembly. Combining his work Grand Justice in 1795, Paine would lay out the blueprint for the modern social democratic philosophy we see in FDR and Bernie Sanders 100-200 years later. He would lay out programs for land and wealth redistribution, a universal one-time capital grant for both men and women when they reach the age of maturity, similar to a universal basic income except it's not annual, just a one-time capital grant. He also was the creator of the U.S. Social Security program, well over a century before it was actually implemented. He also had the notion that all people must pay a 10% tax on all personal and private property, and a way to deal with the hoarding of wealth while giving an argument for ownership of the means of production half a century before Karl Marx. Thomas Paine stated, Personal property is the effect of society, and it is as impossible for an individual to acquire personal property without the aid of society as it is for him to make land originally. Separate an individual from society and give him an island or a continent to possess, and he cannot acquire personal property. He cannot be rich. So inseparable are the means connected with the end in all cases that where the former do not exist, the latter cannot be obtained. All accumulation, therefore, of personal property beyond what a man's own hands produce is derived to him by living in society. And he owes on every principle of justice, of gratitude, and of civilization a part of that accumulation back again to society from whence the whole came. If we examine the case minutely, it will be found that the accumulation of personal property is, in many instances, the effect of paying too little for the labor that produced it. The consequence of which is that the working hand perishes in old age and the employer abounds in affluence. This was revolutionary and again would be arguments that were echoed later on by Karl Marx and other well-known Marxist, communist, socialists, and the like. Paine would lay the philosophical bedrock of the entire modern socialist movement with this understanding of the exploitation of labor and the pre-Keynesian welfare programs.